Hey GED students, I'm so excited for this video. So much so that when I saw this question in the GED We Study and Help Each Other Facebook group, Tammy had posted it, I just dropped everything on my to-do list to rush to do this for you guys because I think it's gonna be so helpful to so many of you. But what Tammy was saying was, Man, she is having so much trouble with these little signs. The less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to symbols are just messing with her and they keep flipping on her. And this is like hugely common issue with GED students. What happens is we have this lovely, beautiful trick that our elementary school teachers taught us and they were trying to help us when they taught it to us. Um, and it worked back in third grade with the kind of problems that we had. But then all of a sudden it stops working in high school. And it is the alligator trick. You guys, I can't see a single Facebook post on this stuff uh, without a bunch of students coming in and saying, alligator, 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 alligator. And I will just tell you, you're not helping your fellow students. The alligator is not enough for a high school level of understanding. Let me show you what I mean. Here's what the alligator is if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about. A lot of elementary school teachers, uh, you'll have problems like this in your in your books that'll say something like, you know, insert a sign and they'll give you these signs. Less than, greater than, equal to. Insert a sign between five and seven to make a true statement. And so the trick that uh, teachers will use to help you remember that this is the less than sign and this is the greater than sign, will be to imagine an alligator mouth. And the alligator's super hungry, so he always eats the bigger number. And so you'll just uh, face that open mouth towards seven, since it's a larger uh, number. And some teachers, as sweet as they are, might even draw you little alligator teeth so you can envision this. And wasn't Mrs. Turner just so adorable, you know? Or if it was the other way around, with the larger number on the left, then Mrs. Turner would have you face that big open mouth uh, towards that seven there. And you guys are good to go. You know which way the answer goes. Problem is though, you're not math literate. Meaning even though you know which way the symbol goes, you don't know what the symbol says. Algebra is a language. Guys, I need you to be able to read it. By the time you get to high school or the GED or college, you are expected to be literate, to be able to read that symbol so that when you see something like this, you know what it means. Guys, without knowing what this symbol means, you cannot unlock this statement. It means nothing to you because you're just like, alligator pointing to the bigger number. I need you to be able to read, there is a number X that is greater than eight. And then if I tell you, you know, um, Y is less than seven, I'm gonna need you to directly translate Y is less than seven, not write down Y and seven, and then ponder about which way an alligator mouth should go. I need you to be literate. So that being said, is there a better way? Oh yeah, guys, there's a better way. <laughs> Instead of using tips and tricks and these kinds of like, I, I mean, they're useful. Don't get me wrong. T tips and tricks are great. I know that your teachers were giving them to you guys to help you remember a lot of information. But the problem is if you don't know where things come from, if you don't know why we do what we do, you're just going to be spouting off a bunch of information that you have memorized without understanding. And the GED is a reasoning test. So here is where these symbols actually come from. You can use this to remember it, but also it'll just make sense. Go ahead, draw me a line right here in your notes. Boom, connect these two symbols. We didn't just make up these less than and greater than symbols. They actually came off of either side of a number line. You might be saying, well, why does that matter, Kate? Well, even those of you guys who mix up your less than and greater than signs know how we usually do a number line. You know, we'll start with some number in the middle. It's often zero. It doesn't have to be, okay, but I'll start with zero. And then as we want our numbers to get larger, bigger, guys, as we want them to get greater, we go off to the right. You know, my numbers are gonna get bigger. One, 
to. That direction off to the right, there is the greater direction on a number line. And so this symbol right here, that's the greater than symbol. Okay, and then conversely, as we go off in the other direction, you know, we want to find something less than zero, getting into our negative numbers, negative one, negative two, we go off there where our numbers are getting less and less and less. The further we go to the left, the lesser our numbers get. And so this is the lesser than or less than symbol. Okay, so anytime you're getting stuck, just draw yourself a little number line. Plug a few numbers down on there, and then you'll be able to quickly remember, oh, this is the greater side, so that must be greater than. And this is the lesser side, so that must be lesser than. Easy to remember, and now we're building actual literacy instead of fiddling around with alligator mouths. I don't know. Okay, you guys. Now, I do have a trick to help you remember how to say it as well. I'm not totally anti-tricks, but I want this to be your primary understanding of where these things are coming from. Because again, if you don't understand why, those tricks are not going to help you for very long. Okay, but that being said, I do have a trick. Um, I take a look at this symbol. It kind of looks like an L. In fact, if you write uh, with my slanty left-handed handwriting, the way I usually write, um, you'd see that I have this L that kind of slants over on its side, and that is the less than symbol. All right, and we could look at the G similarly, I guess, put a little head on it, and then we'd have a greater than. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with tips and tricks, but make sure that we know where our things come from. And then of course that we're literate, we can read the symbols, not just place them down when we know the relationship between the left and the right hand side. Okay, now you might be wondering, well, what about these other two symbols she has over there? Well, there's, there's another thing that the alligators can't help us with. You know, um, back in elementary school, there was never any reason to use either of these symbols. Uh, because we were just examining two known numbers. Let me show you what I mean. Like, for example, uh, I don't know if I had 11 over here and 8 over here. And I asked you, like, you know, which symbol would you want to use to make a true statement? Well, we know the relationship between 11 and 8. It's known. So we would definitely just say 11 is greater than 8. Okay, and then, of course, if I had a number that was equal on either side, 11 and 11, the only symbol, I know this, I know 11 is the same as 11, I would use an equal sign. But there'd be no time that would make sense for me to use the greater than or equal to sign if I know both numbers. It's not going to be greater than or equal to, it's going to be greater than. Or in another problem, it might be equal to. Uh, but all of a sudden, of course... When I get into the world of algebra and there are unknowns, there's letters, things we don't know, it does make sense for something to be greater than or equal to. I'll give you an example. Uh, let's see. Let's write an inequality where I have a number x greater than or equal to 11. So what does this statement say, you guys? Well, it says that x has to be some number that is either larger than or equal to 11. And why you guys get mad at me is because you're like, well, what is it? Is it larger than or is it equal to? What number is it? And I'm not making that strong of a statement. It's not like back in elementary school where I was only examining one number. I'm actually talking about a whole set of numbers. So a great example of this is like, if I needed $11, um, Oh, I know. I'm going to the movies and the movies cost $11. Now, guys, I'd love to go to the movies and not only pay for my movie, but get popcorn and candy. And you guys know how expensive that could be. I, I could want more than $11, but I need at least $11 to get in just to buy my ticket. Okay, that's when a statement like this makes sense. Well, how much money does Kate need to go to the movies? She needs 
at least $11. It's okay for it to equal 11, sure. But it would be even better for me personally if I had more than 11 because I could buy all the other things I want. So how much money does Kate need to go to the movies? The amount of money Kate needs has got to be greater than or equal to $11. And that's what a symbol like that means. It doesn't make sense. In the elementary school context, we used it. But now all of a sudden in the world of algebra, where we have these beautiful variables where we that can be used to represent more than one number, a whole range of numbers, now we need this additional symbol. So just like um, with the other two, the plain old less than and the plain old greater than, you can still use a number line drawn in between. Okay, still that idea as we go off to the right here, our numbers get greater. And so this is the greater than or equal to symbol. Let's get that in our notes. Uh, again, um, you are going to remember this better. If you have a mental image, I highly suggest you take the time to draw these little diagrams in your notes. Um, you know, it's, it's not for me, it's for you. Okay. And then as I go off to the left, my numbers are getting lesser than, so this is the less than or equal to symbol. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Totally hope that cleared things up for you, Tammy, and everybody else who was talking about alligators. Again, I hope you don't feel attacked. There is nothing wrong with that alligator method of helping you to remember, but I just really, really need you guys to graduate to a high school level of understanding, okay? Let's leave the alligators to the third graders um, and to Mrs. What did we say her name was? Harper? <laughs> All right, you guys, if you have any GED questions, I love to answer them. They're my favorite. Go ahead, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And then I just want to say a quick shout out to all my patrons. You guys, bless me. Thank you for supporting me monthly. And to anybody else um, who is willing or able to do that to support me on Patreon by becoming a patron for as little as $3 a month. I would be so blessed. Happy learning.